Well then, ladies and gentlemen, here we go again. NVIDIA 50 series is here, and I think it's fair to say that it looks interesting. On a positive note, in the right games and the right settings, you are going to see a monumental shift in how smooth your games can be, with crazy high frame rates and RTX titles like Cyberpunk and Alan Wake 2, and pricing that is a bit better than many of us expected, though potentially in the US not maybe for that long, but more on that in a bit. But then again, on the other hand, adopting a more negative tone, we barely have any real information on how these cards will actually play more normal games, with things like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Apex Legends, and loads more, with all of these huge performance increases relying solely on AI to get there. And I mean, for context, NVIDIA actually told us that in some of these RTX DLSS 4 enabled titles, we're actually seeing around about 15 out of 16 pixels being generated by AI. I mean, let that sink in for a second. Let's start then with what exactly was announced. And there wasn't that much in the press conference because apparently Jensen couldn't be bothered to discuss any of it in great detail. But the main news really is that we do have a total of four new graphics cards, the RTX 5090, 5080, 5070, and 5070 Ti. And I've got to admit that the RTX 5090 looks pretty wild. It's got an absolutely gigantic 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 VRAM, a mighty 550 watt TGP, and yet somehow a tiny body that's only two slots wide. And a lot of this is down to the fact that the PCB now is ridiculously small. So most of the card that you have is now cooler. And obviously when you're using like an ASUS Strix or something like that, we've come to expect that, but then it's kind of like that, but scaled down even more. More. I mean, don't get me wrong, this isn't a tiny GPU, it's still going to be almost 30 centimeters in length, but the fact remains that actually for a graphics card that's going to use 550 watts, this is way smaller than anything I would have expected. And whilst we only saw the 5090 at the event itself, once you do start digging into the website, you can see that the 5080 will use the same cooler as the 5090, but then the 5070 will have its own design. But then, oddly, something that I've seen is that it doesn't look like there'll be a 5070 Ti Founders Edition at all as there's no sizing information and it just says check out the manufacturer's specs. Now, talking about performance, this is where things are actually quite simple and incredibly vague all at the same time, as again, we barely have any hard numbers at all, and the graphs that we do have don't make it clear whatsoever what gains that we are actually going to be getting. In fact, all of the graphs are almost interchangeable, and each claim that the card is around about two times faster than the one it replaces. So the 5090 is two times faster than 4090, the 5070 two times faster than 4070, etc etc. Which don't get me wrong, sounds absolutely fantastic if true. I mean doubling your frame rate from the previous generation, who wouldn't want that? But let's be honest, the truth behind all of this is certainly a little bit murky. The first reason for this is because it will only apply to DLSS 4 enabled titles. So if you're playing something like Far Cry 6, you're going to see a boost nearer to around about 20-25%. Again, we don't really know this for sure as we don't actually have firm numbers on the graph, but we can't use our eyes I suppose. Do note though that this does also include ray tracing, so thanks to the extra RT performance that you are going to see across the range on these new 50 series cards, the raw rasterization boost with RT off would likely be a fair bit lower. But this then brings us to the second reason, and arguably I think the most confusing and probably polarizing thing about 50 series, and this is DLSS 4, but specifically what they're calling multi-frame generation. And you can think of this as an even faster and in theory way better version of frame generation that we saw on 40 series. And some good news actually amongst all of this is that some of the improvements are actually going to be coming to 40 series with a new AI algorithm that will give you better latency and memory usage. But to be fair, the meat of this tech specifically only really works on 50 series. Essentially, your PC will render a frame and then the now much faster tensor cores will generate up to three AI images, up from one on the previous gen, to insert in between the next rendered one, which will create a much smoother series of images as a result. But this is the point where things get so, so tricky, and I know for a fact that there are going to be so many gamers out there that are going to be buying into the promise of having like 200 FPS in Cyberpunk, and at best are going to be confused with what they end up actually getting on screen, and at worst kind of thinking that they've been a little bit misled, because I want to make this absolutely as clear as possible, and anyone that's interested in 50 series, this is by far the most important thing you need to know about it. AI-generated frames do not feel 
the same as ones that are natively rendered. So obviously, as we know, if you have an AI generated frame, you might have some artifacting. So with DLSS super resolution, obviously you might have some jaggies or some flickering, or if you use frame generation, you might get a few oddities and things, but this doesn't really affect you that much. And if you find that the game is badly implemented, you can just turn this off. But with AI generated frames and specifically having three lots of AI generated frames and something like Cyberpunk, I think the latency difference between what people are expecting to be able to feel so let's say 200 fps and what they're actually going to be getting is going to be night and day difference the best way of thinking about it is let's say you had 50 fps you turn on frame generation and if it goes to 120 fps then the game's going to feel potentially around about 45 fps but you're going to have all of the smoothness associated with 120 so it's not the technology that's going to like save you from everything you need to have a decent frame rate in the first place i mean i would say with frame gen if you can aim for like 80 fps then you've got high refresh rate monitor you can let the frame gen fill your screen fantastic but what we saw specifically on the previous generation if you turn on like the really heavy settings like path tracing or you're using something like a 4070 and you've got a lower frame rate to begin with then you could kind of i don't want to say fake it but again you could turn like 40 fps into 70 fps which on paper on video might look fantastic but in reality the way that the game feels wouldn't be so please be very very careful around this i'm not saying nvidia's claims are false but i am a bit disappointed that they weren't a little bit clearer about what the latency of this is going to be they're comparing it to dillasys off entirely whereas i want to see what it's like with frame gen off frame gen on. That's what I'll be testing anyway as soon as we get these in for review. Get subscribed by the way if you aren't already. Moving swiftly on though, and actually some more good news, everyone on 20 series and up will benefit from the improvements to super resolution of DLSS 4 with a new AI upscaling algorithm that gives better detail and motion. Nice. And whilst there are only around about 75 games that will support DLSS 4 at launch, there is actually a way to back inject it into older DLSS 3 games. Though how well this works and what features it's actually going to support, we don't really know yet. There's also a new version of NVIDIA Reflex, dubbed 2.0, that aims to make you better in multiplayer titles. That was a joke, by the way. Come on, round of applause, everyone, for my wit. Essentially, in a nutshell, this tracks the camera movement of your game, and then it then uses AI to bend around pixels as you move the camera, filling in the blanks, and allowing your game to feel more responsive as a result. And actually, I think it's not is, is not a one-to-one -one comparison, but AMD almost have something similar, but they actually lower the resolution down when you move the mouse around, and this can just, again, make the game feel more responsive. But NVIDIA are actually doing this by manipulating the image and almost getting into the game engine a little bit more. It, it's going to be clever tech, and they've kind of showed like a before and after as well. But again, this is something that you really need to feel to appreciate the difference. Elsewhere, we see PCIe Generation 5 land on these cards, but don't worry about it too much unless you're specifically buying a 5090. I'd say we're unlikely to see any big losses with good old Gen 4 on pretty much anything else, though of course I can't say this for sure, we will have to test this. All new cards also come with the new DisplayPort 2.1b standard, allowing for 4K 480Hz or 8K 120 on cables longer than 1 meter, which is nice. And then as for pricing, as mentioned, I was actually a bit surprised because it is slightly lower than I expected, with the 5070, 70Ti 70 and 5080 essentially remaining about the same as the previous generation, whilst the 5090 does get a I was going to say small, a decent bump to the price to make that just under £2,000 in the UK. I think it's $1,939 and then $2,000 in the US. But a word on pricing, if you are specifically in the US, and this might affect everyone, we don't know how it's going to go down. If there are some new tariffs that come in when the new government come in in the States, then this might affect any imports. And this could specifically also affect GPUs, which means that if they are coming in from Taiwan and they are getting taxed, then they could either absorb the hit, but it's far more likely that the price is going to be passed on to you. So we don't know if this is going to happen. We don't know what the amounts would be. And as I say, we don't know if these would be passed on, but it's safe to assume that if it does, there is going to be some extra costs around these GPUs. But this is the bit now where I have left the end of my script empty because I just want to talk as open and honestly really about these new cards with you and specifically whether you should consider buying them because let's start with the real good news right you could say that what we had before this is going to be better 
for the most part, the prices are the same. You'll be able to buy the older generations for less money. It is a good thing that these cards have launched. As we know, and as we've discussed, if a lot of these improvements are solely gonna be coming from AI, then the AI tech is gonna have to be great. And I don't see how you can improve the latency of your game with AI generated frames. This is something that I'm sure Nvidia will be showing us over the coming weeks but I don't see how that's possible, which is why I say you're still gonna need to have loads of GPU horsepower to actually get the decent frame rate in the first place. And if DLSS super resolution has got better as well, fantastic. The problem we have, and the bit that I haven't really mentioned yet, is all about VRAM, because yes, 32 gigabytes on the 5090 is great, and it's more than anyone is really ever gonna need. I mean, 24 is still more than most people are ever gonna use. I am probably gonna go slightly against the grain and say that actually 16 gigabytes of memory on the 5080 is okay. I obviously would prefer it's more, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be a problem. There are gonna be some memory optimizations that will reduce the memory usage on these new cards, but until we've seen the results and we've seen them affect all games rather than just specifically the NVIDIA RTX titles. I mean, the 5070 Ti, 16 gigabytes, again, that's gonna be more than enough really, even at 4K resolution. But the real problem, and I think the the real thing that we just can't believe is that the 5070, despite the fact that Nvidia is saying this is 4090 performance, which don't get me wrong, in terms of the outputted number that you might get at the top right corner of your screen in Cyberpunk with DLSS 4 enabled, that may well be the same. But until I see the latency figures, you know, I don't want to say I don't believe it, but I will personally believe it when I see it, I suppose. But 12 gigabytes of VRAM in 2025 on the 5070, I think that's pretty outrageous, really. That is obviously to try and get you to bump up to the 5070 Ti. I think as well that the raw rasterization performance of that GPU is probably going to be similar to the 4070 Super that we had before. And it's just such a lot of money to be spending on a GPU. I'm sure they spin this as like a 1440p card, but no, it's not. If you're spending 500 pounds or more on a graphics card, it should be for 4K gaming, even if you're not gonna use 4K at the moment, that it should be capable of that. I'm disappointed in the 5070. I, again, will have to do a load of testing, get subscribed, we'll go through everything. But 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I think it's gonna be absolutely fine for now. I think 2025, you're probably gonna be good unless you're specifically playing at the absolute highest settings without any of this AI tech. But it's about flexibility. I mean, AMD GPUs have had more than 12 gig for years and years and years. So even if it's faster memory, I don't think uh, it's good enough that we only have 12 gigabytes on this card. I imagine it's just a cost thing because they would have had to make the 5080 go to like 20 or 24 gig uh, to kind of get all the cards to line up properly. But then this also doesn't bode well really, does it for the other GPUs, things like the 5060. Is that gonna be an eight gig card again? Surely they've learned their lesson, but we just have to wait and see. It looks like Nvidia have certainly done what they've needed to do, but until I see the latency figures for all of these AI generated frames and I actually play one of these games, I am holding my breath. I don't wanna say ignore frame generation entirely because that's definitely not what I think. What exactly are these cards gonna be capable of? There's so many questions to be answered. And as I say, I'm excited to say that as soon as I get hands on and I can share with you what I've actually felt I will be doing so. So please get subscribed and we will keep you updated on the 50 series as much as we can. But the question goes out to you on this one. What do you make of the launch? Has it been better than you expected? Or are you not very pleased, let's say, with what Nvidia have shown you here? It's all about AI. You don't want this. You want no DLSS, no ray tracing. You just want the best possible GPU. Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But as I say, get subscribed, hit the like button if you've enjoyed this and we will catch you in the next one.